Hi! Welcome back! I'm Mary, and I hook books. I crochet while I listen to audiobooks, and this is my February 2023 wrap-up. And just be warned, it's going to be a little bit chaotic and jumbly and jump around. It's been a crazy week. They're doing uh, construction at my apartment, so dust has been everywhere. My allergies have been going crazy. I spent my day off with my boss doing a special event, which was actually really fun, but don't tell him that. So, I have no light to film by because I go to work before the sun is really up. I come back after the sun has gone down. So we're gonna jump around a little bit and it's gonna be a fun wild ride. And my five-star read that I've already talked about was Bite Me by Christopher Moore little vampire romance. It's just f a fun time. The Emperor of San Francisco and his little puppy knights were just my favorite thing in the world. If you need some wholesome, cozy fantasy, I would spring for Bite Me. And that was the third in the series that started with Blood Sucking Fiends. And along those same lines, I've already talked about Vicious by V.E. Schwab, and I had not had good luck with V.E. Schwab before, but I really liked this one. I gave this one four stars, and I don't think I've talked about Come As You Are, the scientific secrets that will change your sex life, and I expected to kind of like this book, but I loved this book so much of uh, the book wasn't actually about the physical act of sex. It was about someone's stress response and how that can get in the way of having a good intimate experience. And I teach a class called Sexuality, Touch, and Intimacy, and I expected to be able to get some good stuff for that particular lecture that I have to do. But she talks about the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, the different parts of your brain that are involved, how you have to go through your entire stress response to get to the other side. And as the Winchesters would say, the only way out is through. And when we numb ourselves, we're actually keeping ourselves in the freeze phase of a stress response. So you have to somehow get to the end of your stress cycle. And just because you got rid of the stressor doesn't mean that you got rid of the stress. And she suggests various ways to do that, including my favorite, which is to get a massage and activate your parasympathetic nervous system. So I also picked up a lot of stuff I can use for my anatomy lectures on the nervous system. So that was unexpected, but I just loved this and I have suggested this to everyone that I've come in contact with. I'm thinking about actually getting a physical copy that I can lend out to people because it's just so good and so well researched. Part of it that I could have done without that I understand why it was there was the individual stories of the hypothetical amalgamations of women that she's helped or known over the years. I'm much more just give me the science, but it's a very good writing tool to personalize information. So I understand why she did it. It just wasn't my favorite part of the book. So I gave it 4.5 originally, but the fact that I can't stop telling people about it and using the information from it makes me think I'm going to bump it up to a 3 point or to a 4.75 instead. And I've already talked about another sci-fi mystery called The Paradox Hotel, and I gave that one 4.75 stars, a really great ensemble cast, really good main character, and I made this infinity scarf 
and matching headband and I think you can see some of the sparkle in this big twist sparkle yarn. It is gorgeous. I think I'm going to pick some more up for people's Christmas gifts this year if they still have some in stock because I am just loving this. And then I also read The Vicious Circle. I talked about that quite a bit during my earlier vlog and in case you were wondering what I was making in my vlog. I was making this bird of paradise here. And the main character is a model when she meets her boyfriend and she's in a fashion show inspired by tropical birds. So I made this rainbow tropical bird. And I should have just waited because they go to a cult compound called the Mandala and everyone wears togas or robes in the colors of the chakras. So I could have made a really cute blanket out of that, but that came along a little bit further in. And I want to try to make sure that whatever project I'm working on, I can finish it before I finish the book. And I was messaging with an old friend and I kept getting distracted while I was making this or while I was sewing the pieces back together. So he's, he's a little crooked. <laughs> he's, he's a little special that way, but we're still going to love him anyway. He doesn't have a name though. If you have any suggestions for names, please leave those in the comment box down below. Thank you. All right, I warned you guys this would be chaotic and jumping around a little bit. This is the next day I am at work because it has better lighting and at my apartment I don't have anywhere to really lay this out so you can see the whole thing. This is that blanket that I was making while listening to George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood and then Rise of the Dragon, which I gave 3.5 stars to. Another short story collection that I read this month is Wastelands by John Joseph Adams. And this is different stories of various apocalyptic scenarios. And none of them are really about the apocalypse happening. It's just how people have to live since an apocalypse has happened. And I love that. You don't quite get all of it. It lets your mind wander what happened, how did they get here, and what are people like when things are totally different, when you've lost everything, what do you still have inside? And I made these scaly mutant inspired gloves during that. And all the stories were good, none of them were amazing, but they were all good enough that I really enjoyed this entire collection. So I gave this 4.5 stars. I've already talked about my DNF for the month. It's Life After Life by Kate Adkinson, but I love this rose pattern. And I've actually made quite a few in various colors. So did not enjoy the book, but I found a really fun and super easy pattern that I can whip up if I need a really quick gift or I can put in my already made stash for somebody. Another nonfiction that I've already talked about was Riding the Elephant by Craig Ferguson, and that was a lot of fun. I gave that one 4.25 stars. So my second five star book of the month was Fan Fiction, A Mem Noir by Brent Spiner, and this was so much fun. He literally wrote fan fiction about his own life and turned it into a noir style mystery. And the entire cast of uh, the Star Trek The Next Generation come back and voice themselves on the audiobook. So if you are going to read fan fiction, get the audiobook. It is so much fun. And there were enough red herrings to actually kind of keep me guessing. 
the end felt a little bit rushed, but it was just so fun getting there. And it made me relive some nostalgia from my Trekkie youth. And I also read Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Marie Machado. And this little green bow is inspired by the first story in that. And she really, without being explicit, expresses the feeling of violation that just living in American society as a woman can create. And it's a short story collection, so there's several different short stories, and they were all at least good. And then you put them together, and the collection is greater than the sum of its parts. It almost got a little too heavy for me, kind of, in the middle. Some of the ones in the middle I didn't like as much as some of the ones at the very beginning and the ones at the very end, which is very typical in short story collections. But overall, very good. 3.5 stars. I also finished Underland, A Deep Time Journey by Scott McFarlane, and this is someone's five star. In fact, there's some people in my previous class that I taught that I really wish they'd stayed in touch and told me they passed their state test so that I could recommend this book to them because it's so good for someone that loves climbing, someone that loves urban exploration. So that's their five star book. For me, 2.5, 2.75. And then currently I am in the middle of Pushing Daisy. Actually, I'm about 90% of the way through Pushing Daisy. And this is the second book in the Clockwork Chimera series. The first book was almost like a thriller. Like, you did not know what was going on, the character didn't know what was going on, and she really had a reason to believe everyone was out to get her. Everyone is keeping something from her. And she was trying to evade people that she thought were friends, and I loved the first book. Pushing Daisy, it, I think it suffers from middle book syndrome a little bit. The first half felt like it just kept reminding us of what happened, which was nice because it's been a long time since I read Daisy's Run, but it just kept reminding us what was going on to the point that I'm actually wondering if this was released in a series of short stories because it has a very last time on Daisy's Run kind of a feel to the storytelling. I kind of got annoyed at just harping on this one particular character flaw of our main character. I was like, okay, I get it. And I know that she's going to have a character journey, but um, I, it's an okay read. About two-thirds of the way through, it did start to pick up, and now I'm more interested. And I think because it is a middle book, it's setting up what's going to happen in the next book. So I'm really excited to figure out where we're going. So I may or may not continue in the series. We'll see. I do have a little less than 10% left to read. Right now I'm leaning for about a three. And if the next book becomes available at the library or if it goes on sale, I might pick it up. But based on the second book, I'm not quite sure. But for Easter, I've made these cute little daisy heart baskets for Pushing Daisy or Daisy's Run. And do I have, oh, I am in the middle of Cultish, which is actually really great so far. I had my expectations trimmed back a little bit by a couple reviewers, and I'm really glad that that happened. For someone that has done a lot of research into cults, I love the concept of cults and figuring out why people get involved in cults and how 
people and cult leaders suck people in and make them change their entire lives. And I've gotten a lot of background on various cults, so there is some new information that I'm really enjoying. And in the very first chapter, it talks about 3HO, which I did not know existed, which is funny because it was a big Hollywood one. I can't believe I haven't heard of it. And I'm also never drinking Yogi tea again. But I had a friend that drove with me to our work thing. My work friend. Hi, work friend. Uh, and I was like, hey, we can listen to music or I'm listening to the book about cults. And she goes, ooh, cults. <laughs> And she had not heard of Nexium or Teal Swan. And someone who has a little less background, this could be really amazing, I think. And so far I'm enjoying it. I'm about 70% of the way through. But so far so good. It's looking to be maybe a 3.5, but I will let you know if I finish it by the end of February and definitely in my March wrap-up. Well, please say hello to my lovely teaching assistant, Mr. Bones. And I finished Pushing Daisy last night after I filmed, and yeah, three stars. It largely is just a build-up to the next book, but I don't regret spending time with it. So, short, chaotic month, but on Storygraph, it does show this is my best reading month ever. It's 4.14 star average for the month. And they don't include DNFs, which I usually give one star to in my personal reading journal. But still, even if it comes down a little bit, I've never had a four star average month as long as I've been logging my reading. So I've had a 3.98, but never gotten above four stars. And total, I read 11 books this month, which is not a ton, but it's a quality above quantity kind of a month, apparently. So have you read any of these books? Are you planning to? What should I name my very special little rainbow bird? Let me know in the comments down below. And in the description box, I'll have links to all of the patterns that I used for this month. And uh, I'll also have my story graph if you want to follow me over there and my buy me a coffee link down below if you'd like to fuel my crochet reading habit. You can buy me a coffee and I hope that you're having an amazing month. I hope that March treats you well. I hope you're remembering to take care of yourself. Remember to just take a minute, breathe, and keep your head up.